guess what? It's our favorite time. Let's get the sand in, huh? So I'm literally, like, look. Like, there's no pressure on there. I hope you guys can see that. It's always hard to film out in the sun. See, I'm literally just, I'm not pushing any pressure on there. Those fuzzies are coming right off, and that's a good thing. I'm literally just going to hit this a little bit with the 300. Nothing too crazy. This is just one coat of primer, and I think I'm already getting down to the white right there. So, give it a bit of a wipe off. Okay. And 400. A little bit finer. All right. I'm not really worried about this. For the record, it is still sliding in and out of the rocket pretty loose. And if it is, I got some tape, foam tape actually. I'm going to try some foam tape here. If it's still way too loose, we'll see. And how about some just good old 600, huh? Almost polishes it at this point. And I don't even feel like taking a stick off. I'm trying to tell you, we're going to go right to painting as soon as we can. And today's looking like it's going to be a good day to paint. We can just get this sanded. So we've got this, this this part done here, and I say it's looking pretty decent. Get a couple coats of paint on there, it'll be fine. It's like, it looks like there's little tiny fuzzies right here, but look, it's just a shoulder. And I am going to paint it black because I just don't want it to be, you know, everything else is black and then that's white. Even though you're only going to see that when it's that ejection. So, got the 600. It's nice and easy. Hardly any pressure. I'm just going to work it. You guys know how this goes if you've been watching any of my videos. I'm slowly rotating it in my hand. Okay. Waiting for that kind of light looking color. If I give this a little wipe, that's what we're looking like so far. And I'm telling you, this is so much smoother than this right here. And I'll get back to you when I'm done. So look, I got a payload section on a stick. And it's all sanded. You know what that means. Ready to paint it black. Get it all wiped down, dust it off. We're going to get this set up to paint. Yep, yep, yep. All right, here goes nothing. We're all cleaned off, blown off. Got it in the power box. We're going to do this. All shaken up. Let's see. Wind's, wind's pretty good. not get any runs huh get a little bit of splatter
And that might be one coat. All right. I'm not seeing any runs yet. That's what happens when you got favorable conditions. Actually looking pretty darn good from one coat. Okay. Let's leave it alone. See, when this is in the sun, this is not. So we'll see how that goes. Because it's still pretty early in the morning. So far so good, I think. Okay, we'll come back in a little bit and do a second coat. Second coat time, hasn't been that long. So, got it shaking up again. So far, so good. It's going on pretty wet. Wind's picked up actually just a tad bit, but I think it'll be all right. So let's do this. I just wanna hit like that spot right there. It's a little bit light. Okay, I'm thinking maybe one more for good measure right here, and that is a second coat. Okay, I'm going to have to use my other hand to try to get that a little bit. All right, let's get this primer done. Okay, got a brand new can here. Good old two-in-one. I'm going to do this kind of in the shade. The sun's right there, but you know what? I think it'll be all right. It's just the primer coat, right? Final primer coat. I'm going to kind of focus on these, definitely try to get those filled in, because after this I'm not messing with it no more, that's it. Uh, anything that goes on up in here is mostly going to be covered up by the uh, retaining ring anyway, so I'm not really too concerned with what goes up in there, as long as it fits, I ain't got to do too much sanding. So I might actually put an extra coat on after this dries up a little bit just because I'm going to try and fill in any little last remaining bit of the fin fillets looking kind of not so good. Definitely not going for an altitude record with this. Some heavy paint on there, huh? Paint and primer. in there. You can't really see it until it starts to dry up. So I'm definitely going to make sure this is fully covered. See, rotate it again, see if there's any light spots. Yeah, a little bit right here. You 
you know these are actually smoothing out way better than I thought they were so I'm actually happy about that but lesson learned lesson learned okay I'm gonna come back to this in a minute and I'm gonna hit any light spots that are showing up and probably try to put it extra thick on that okay off camera I was able to raise this up and hit that but it's time for the final coat go ahead and just get this done so far so good right I'm hoping I think about going this way for the last I've done some practicing with some polishing compound on some of my other parts that I've already done. I think I might be able to understand how polishing and wet sanding and getting rid of the orange peel and the dusting off these paint jobs. So I might make a video out of that soon. To be honest though, this is looking pretty darn done. Maybe one more right here for good luck. There's a couple, a little bit of dusting on this side, but I think I can get rid of that. And there's, looks like there's some dust particles or dirt that wound up in the paint. And I did clean it as good as possible. I wiped it down, wiped it down, and then I dusted it off. So whatever flew in there had to be afterwards. But this is it. I'm let this dry. And then I'll bring it in the house. We'll mess with it in again, maybe in about a week or so. All right, so here we are a couple hours later. It's pretty dry. Don't really feel tacky at all. It's been pretty warm out. Not super warm. Yeah, we got a couple defects here and there. A couple artifacts, whatever you want to say. But let's uh, let's go ahead and open this, huh? Let me get this stick off because I got to use it for something else, anyways. Let's see if I just kind of pull it off. Boop. Came out how I was hoping. Untouched. All right, I'm gonna hang it up from here. So I've had this painted for a couple days now. This is still fresh, but you see, it seems like the Rust-Oleum kind of settles or shrinks when it cures. And like the other day, this would not have went in so smooth, but there it is. Part one, and it comes right out. Not quite as snug as I want it to be, so I am going to have to put a little something there. Or use screws. So here's the arrow. It's a couple hours later. I painted, well, primed. <laughs> I primed this, these, these fillets probably five extra times. Let it dry, paint it again let it dry paint it again and this is what I got you know what I think it's still gonna be an awesome rocket I got some 600 grit I'm gonna go ahead and sand this I'm gonna go ahead and save you all that and I'll come back to you when it's done sanding and we'll see what the results are 600 grit I tell you takes a minute to really sand something but this is all buttery smooth I've been working on the fillets okay I haven't really touched this one yet but I've been working on this one I touched this one and this one okay these have not been touched and this one everything else is smooth and ready to be painted but I've been just been really really I, I went to wet sanding because it just seems like 600 grit, once you get to that grit, you're just going to keep getting clogged and clogged and clogged and clogged. 
So the wet when I when I switched the wet sanding, it was going a lot smoother, and it actually feels like it's was getting the fillets small smoother. So this might actually be okay, but I still would not do what I did again. But this is what I got so far. Painter yellow, and I have two yellows. I have. The Rust-Oleum Stops Rust, the Rust-Oleum 2X Painter's Touch, Sunburst Yellow, and Golden Sunset. And I'm thinking the Golden Sunset's going to be the winner. Because it's kind of that darker, more industrial looking yellow that the rocket looks like it's supposed to have. And even though it's going on gray primer, I'm thinking that this, this is going to be the winner. Alright, even though it's starting to get somewhat late in the afternoon, I'm thinking I, am, I got this can warm and the temperature is good and the wind is great right now so I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and get this painted. I think the old golden sunset is going to be the winner. So the paint's going that way so I think I'm going to start from this side, work my way towards the fins. Let's do this. Good thing about this rocket is I don't have to do any masking. One section's yellow and one's black. Okay, let's keep that coat light. We'll go, we'll, we're gonna go the other way in this next coat. I got those fillets about as good as they're gonna be. I'm going to do three coats of this, just like I usually do, and have been doing for this series. Let's see if I can get this turned. pretty light and you know what good news is I'm not seeing any drips right now so I am definitely happy about that you know we're not in the Sun and I can't really see if I can get in this kind of light right here I'm not really seeing any peel or anything like that that's actually how I wanted that coat to go on that's how it's supposed to go on the first coat kind of a light coat we could just barely see, maybe barely see the primer through it so, so far so good so I'm gonna try and do another coat just like this and then my final coat I'm gonna go a little thicker hopefully without any drips all right see you guys in about 10 minutes all right, I lied I waited about five minutes because really I think that's all you got to do and it went on so light I'm gonna come at this angle if it hits the motor mount, whatever. But I got to hit some of this fin, the uh, rail guide, some of that fin, definitely. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come this way now. And if we got to do an extra coat, hey, we'll do an extra coat. I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't think there's a law against it. Let's see if I can hit that edge there. There we go. Let's make sure I'm getting all the edges. might need an extra coat just a big concern is always runs and this is actually going on pretty darn good this is actually pretty satisfying how it's going on right now it's like zero orange peel so far or misting the uh, dusting Maybe it's just because the, the conditions are favorable. Let's 
starting to look like an arrow. And I worked on those fillets. I worked and worked and worked on them. Yeah, they're, they're, they've definitely got something going on, but it's actually coming out a hundred million times better than I thought it would. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. Almost like dodging a bullet. Just kind of trying to hit those buttons a little bit. I mean, that paint's probably going to scrape off anyways as it goes up the rail. But I do just want to hit them a little bit. That's all. Because I just didn't want them sticking out white. It would be better if they were like black or yellow already. But I just don't think it would match. Yeah, I got a hair right there. So I can let you see it. If it'll zoom, if it'll focus. Come on now. Focus. Focus. Eh. It's not a big deal. I have some areas that are definitely going to need some touch up that I have to focus on, is definitely the fins because it just seems like it's going on a little light. Like the edges right there. I've been—I actually hit the, the rail guides a little bit off camera, just a little bit extra, making sure I'm getting the tips and hopefully hit the tips with no drips. And that rhymes, right? That means I know what I'm talking about. Nah, I'm kidding. It has been five minutes again already, so this is technically the final coat, but I'm thinking I might just have to do an extra because I can still see primer and the way that I put on the other two coats that was going on kind of light, maybe a little too light. But I can see like an unevenness, and it's not just from the shadows of the uh, tree. So far this paint job is pretty darn good for me. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with one more. I got it here for now in the sunlight and I'm seeing that up here, you probably can't really tell on camera, is definitely a little lighter. So I definitely, I guess I wasn't really focusing. I'm so worried about all this down here, I wasn't really hitting this that good. So what I might do is just kind of come in and just do like another coat. I kind of did do like one more little coat off camera on the on the rail guides. And I think that really, to be honest, it's, it is done. Like I was almost gonna make this part right here and say, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm actually done. But I, I brought it over here into the sunlight to get a really good look at it. And I'm thinking it does need at least one more coat towards the uh, the front. All right, three and a half. I think we're going to really push our luck if we just keep going, so. I 
think I missed anything. I think this is it. I think this is a painted rocket. Alright, good deal. I'm thinking, let it dry for a little while. Then I'll bring it inside. And we'll mess with it in about a week. Alright, we're all in now. Let's go ahead and put this retainer on here. On the old arrow. I need to rough this up. I mean, just for adhesion purposes, I think that we're fitting just fine still. And I can put an engine in here just fine. It's still fitting, sliding in and out just fine. But I do want to rough it up just for adhesion, adhesion sake. Just a little bit. I got the JB Weld going on. It's supposed to be better for heat than just regular epoxy. Old 220 grit sandpaper. Look at there coming off on me like that. That's the dust. Get this cleaned off. Right, this is a little bit like that. that shouldn't be falling into the JB Weld. Give it a nice little yellow pigment. But we've confirmed that we're fitting. Right? Come on. Oh. Pull the adapter. So I think we're I think we're looking flush. So that's how it's gonna sit. Now let's apply it. Got old regular old JB Weld. Four to six hours it says, but we're gonna definitely not fly this for a while, but at least 24 hours. That would be my minimum. Let's put a little bit more like towards the front that maybe just don't want any going in the motor tube or getting on the threads is basically what I don't want yes yeah, so that's going in a little bit I'm just putting it, you know, every couple dots. Because I'm going to give it a little twist when I put it in anyways. So, the main concern is just, just as long as we can put the engine in and out freely. And we don't block up the threads on the actual retainer itself. I'm not going to run the rough this up because it's already got that machined roughness to it. So, alright, here goes nothing. Sitting flush, probably give it a little twist. Maybe a little back and forth. Okay. Still good there. Now, if I hadn't if I haven't mixed mixed it properly, um, if I haven't mixed it properly, then it probably won't set and it'll be still squishy. But I'll definitely know when I have this out and let this dry. If that dries perfectly, then I know this this should be good. Right? Makes sense. Okay. We're still fitting. With an engine in there, that's how far it'll stick out. So, and it was going to want to be sit kind of flush, which 
might be okay, but I want to be able to unthread mine. I mean, you could probably even set up here about half, probably where just half was sticking out. But I'll do some stability tests just to make sure. You know, these heavy reloadables and the propellant and all that. But I'm going to set this up probably like this for at least tonight. I'm not seeing any extra on the threads or anything like that. So I think we're good. I think that should be plenty. That's that. Then be time for uh, decals next and attaching the nose cone. Well, it's about that time. Decal time. I've already got two on for the fins and I did the old water trick with them. This was done last night. They have set up pretty darn good, I must say. Nothing too out of the ordinary or looking not right. Uh, I did the old water in the drop of soap trick. And even though these are peel and stick and not water slide, worked pretty good. But of course, first thing you got to do is cut them out, right? And yes, they are clear decals, but they do peel off. That's that's what these went. Is what these that's what peeled off the back there. So first things first. Of course, you got to cut them out, and I've already done some. Okay, is, I've done some of the extension of the logo. I just haven't done the logo yet, and I got the other sets uh, for the fins to do. So what I've been doing is literally taking a fresh sharp hobby knife all right this is this one's brand new and I've already cut some of these out I take either this edge here that's metal and I also have this one and this is also metal now of course I've already cut these ones, these ones are easy. These ones are almost a little confusing, but when you really look at it, it starts to make sense. So what I have to decide is which way am I going to cut these out, which is going to make it easiest to cut out and not back myself into a corner. Um, so I'm thinking for this one, I might do probably, I don't know. I mean, it is pretty clear when it goes on, but I might go this way. And I don't know, that might, that might bite me in the ass, I don't know. Well, I'm gonna, I might keep it here. Come down. I don't know. Because the uh, one of the uh, extensions was here, and that kind of threw me off what I was going to do. I was just going to have it squared. But the other one was here. But what I've been doing is I've just been edging it up. So you got one, two, three, right? And I've been trying to just keep it as lined up as possible. And if I cut into the black, oh well. You won't be able to really tell that bad anyways, but we're going to try not to do that. And another thing is I try not to let this slide on me, so I spread my fingers out like that. There's probably a million easier ways to do this, but so far it's worked for me. And if I don't want to do it that way, I can even probably do it this way. Just bring it to the black. right and of course we're going to, have to cut it down here and probably here but you got to ask yourself what do you want to do first because you know if you're trying to cut on a thin piece you know it can start curling up on your bending or not or even peeling up from the uh the backing so what we're going to do is i'm thinking I'm going to start with this edge for this one here. Just to do a demonstration, this is probably a way easier way of doing this if you've ever made this kit yourself. Just kind of eyeballing it. It seems like the closer you get it, with the less 
white or slash clear, the more accurate it will be and fit better on the fin itself. So I'm pushing down pretty decent. And you might have to go over it once or twice and it's, I look, I'm sliding. And I'm trying not to cut my fingers. We don't want to do that. Okay. That looks okay. Now, I would come this way, right? And kind of line it up till I don't hardly see any white. If I cut into the black a little bit, oh well, but... I noticed that when I did cut out the first ones, I, you know, left a little gap of white and it just was not fitting correctly. So they are kind of needing to be somewhat accurate. I mean, if they're not super amazingly accurate, it's not the end of the world. And there's, I guarantee you, probably a lot easier ways of doing this, but this is one of them. It's just what you have. This is how I'm doing it. And... Oh, going into the white, it looks like a little bit. It's like it slid on me. Okay. And that's okay. Because these ones are not perfect. That's for sure. That's for sure. So we come here, right? So you can go this way or this way. I'm actually going to start here. If I'm cutting into my mat, oh well, I probably could have put like a piece of cardboard or something under it. Whatever. Oh, 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 I went away. Kind of different to film and talk at the same time. I have to say that. I need to come up here a little bit. And of course, this thing, I've had to flatten it out several times on a book, put it under a heavy book because it, you know, when it's packaged, it's inside the body tube and it just stays curled up. Oh, see? Look at there. So, it'd be easier probably to pull it like this to this line sometimes you gotta be dynamic and change it up right switch it up on the fly adapt overcome maybe improvise okay that looks nice and sliced I think we're cut. Let's see. Boom. There we go. And they're they're symmetrical. They're mirrored. So see, that's the next one. So that ain't gonna fit because they're mirrored. Alright, so this is gonna be the interesting one, I think. Because I might have to just Start cutting and make it somewhat as straight as possible. But I am going to have to, when I do the extensions, I mean, I'm going to have to line these up, you know, to where they make sense. Where they're not crooked or whatever it might be. So they just got to, you know, try and stay somewhat even with the space there in between the squares so I can I do a little something like that look at there I'm moving if you don't want to tear up your cutting mat which that's what they're supposed to be it's called a cutting mat right let's see I bet we can cut in this direction right so 
That's why I need to flip it. And I'm thinking, As long as it wraps around the body tube, just fine is what I imagine would be okay. Acceptable. So I can't see. That's the problem. I kind of want to see what I'm doing. How far I'm cutting, because I don't want to cut. Something like that should be fine. Now, what if hey, we could probably even do something like this if I wanted to? I'll come back when I figure it out. But y'all get the y'all get the gist of this. So, you want to cut the rest out? You know, here's a fin here, here's a fin here, and here's a fin here, and that's it. We'll be putting them on. I'll bring you back in for a second. That's what I decided to do. Always try to somewhat cut away from myself or just to where it would make sense. I bet if I start like right about here, I moved. Uh. Okay, we're working so far. If I bring this, I little something like this. might move on me but it didn't okay so now we just got some cleanup to do right Get a little bit of see this shouldn't cutting into some of this shouldn't affect see when I crossed here maybe because that's actually pretty clean this right here is gonna have to get cut so Move this out of the way. I'm thinking I can probably actually probably actually shorten this up and it'll be just fine. Just make a straight cut. That way I ain't gotta worry about that. Oh, I lied. Look at me. Master not so cutter. As I moved. Seems like I cut my cutting mat more. Oh no, I cut my cutting mat. Oh no. Mm. What are the odds of that? That's okay. Look at that move. Freehand. See, now this, I, I'm trying to keep this clean that way they're not like crossing, the cuts aren't crossing because when I try to apply the decal, I imagine that that could peel up on me or give me issues. So I'm just trying to cut this freely. And as cleanly as possible, but look at that. See, there's a split right there. But you know what? There's a split right here too. It's very, very small, but it's there. Is it going to matter? I don't know. We'll see. 
And I think I got that about as clean as it's going to be. It's just got to curl over onto the body tube. So, all right, that's next. Let's get these cut out. And I'll come back to you when these are all cut out, and we're going to finish putting them on this rocket. All right, so this is what we got. But I think we're going to start with this. This is supposed to go up towards the payload right up here. We got to wrap that around. Think about probably starting on the other side or maybe starting it here. A little something like this. And then wrapping it around. Because if it don't connect correctly, it'll be on the... Uh, ugly side with the launch lugs, right? Okay. And we're back in the old lab, I guess. Get you a good shot here. So I can rotate it if I need to. Okay. So what I've been doing, I got like literally like two drops, maybe maybe not even two drops. All right, I've tried to clean everything. I'm trying to keep everything as like dust proof and hair proof, whatever might be floating around in your air. If you got cats and you already know, there might be a good chance you're going to get a cat hair or two. Okay, one issue that I had when I put on the fins, when I practiced that off camera, is that, yeah, there was all kinds of stuff. Like you have like little dust and a little bit of hair here and there. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just going to like literally blow that off right this is warm this is pretty warm it's warm warm to the touch almost hot keep your decals as clean as possible you don't want to put them on a bunch of stuff when you especially when you put them under the book to flatten it out make sure your book's clean and you're not Accidentally embedding some dirt into it like it's because you're putting something heavy on it, right? So All right, so these are about as clean as it's gonna be I got the edges as clean as it's gonna be now According to the pitcher The bands the thicker bands are supposed to go this way now. I have That cut out right there and I could have cut it flush with the black, but I did not So I'm thinking what I'm just gonna try to kind of use that to keep it flush with the body tube there. So what you do, of course I got this as clean as possible, right? I'm gonna go ahead and put some water here. And just notice that gravity is working, right? So that might work against us and it might not. This is interesting because this isn't just going to lay flat, it's going to go all the way around, right? So we might start here. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this. Get this wet. If this starts sticking to the tube, I'm going to have to add a little bit more water. And we're going to squeegee everything out anyways. I'm trying not to tear up that corner too bad. Might even use the old hobby knife. Hmm. Oh, there we got it. Okay, trying to bend it out of shape there. Could wear gloves, could use tweezers, but we're just definitely gonna try not to blow a bunch of dust around. Okay, and then I just apply it a little something, something like this. Okay, we're wet. It actually will float a little bit, so I'm going to actually put a little bit more water here. Now it sank because I was running my mouth to prove me wrong. So now I'm going to start a little bit something like this. And it will grab if it's dry. Okay, but we're going to try and put this around as straight as possible. I'm just going to rotate it in my cradle that I have. 
and it's actually going on pretty darn nice. Looks like it might be a little. See, it's not sticking. I could pull it right back up without pulling paint. It's like a water slide decal. It's looking like we're not overlapping too bad. I mean, there's a little bit, but that's why I want this to be the launch lug side. It's looking like we're sitting pretty flush with the body tube. And I'm not really concerned with getting water inside the body tube. And you know, I might not have I might not have cut this as straight, 100 percent straight. But look, see, you can peel it right back off in case you need to. Okay, you just gotta keep it wet because it will start sticking up on you as soon as you start squeegeeing the water out. It doesn't have to sit 100 percent flush with with the payload section either. I'm squeegeeing it, kind of squeegeeing it with my finger right now. And you could probably use a tool, but yeah, see, that's not sitting 100%. That is not sitting 100%, but the plastic is. All right, so we're going to see what's going on here. I'm not going to mess with this too much because I don't want to get it dirty. And I have a feeling that that will definitely make us regret our decisions so I'm gonna re-wet it I'm gonna just kind of sit it down a little lower and which way are we going which way are we going and are we actually that's pretty lined up Nope, I lied. I'm going to come back to you guys on this. i got to really work on this. All right, so that's about as straight as I'm going to be able to get it. I could probably try and force it. I mean, I could probably push it, squeegee it. Yeah, look at there. Maybe I can. Look at there. I was doubting myself for a second. But I have to kind of push from this way. And look, i got that bubble. So there is some overlap. I could even recut it but I'm not going to I'm kind of starting and just kind of like that so I want to make sure it lays as flat as possible and this is going to be the ugly side anyways that's where the rear rail guys or your launch lugs go I mostly just want it to sit dust free and flat For the record, I guess you can cut a little bit shorter if you need be. Now, you can take a paper towel and start dabbing it and just kind of grind it off and just seeing what happens here. Because I'm actually new to this technique. But it worked for me last night and I was like, pretty proud of how that worked out. So... Why well, I decided to keep going with the video now. We're not sitting with the bubbles right yet. I'm working the bubble. See? Now that might just be because it's not. I'm like rolling that bubble. starting to stick pretty good if it went up under there and got out that way I don't see any wrinkles I'm just working it working it working it back and forth back and forth So far, this is, even though not 100% perfect, this is one of the best decals I've ever done. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely sold on the water trick. Because back in the day, I didn't know about it. And 
I would have just slapped them on there probably got pissed off and just painted it something else because I'm not a good decaler at least the old-school method this is these are peel and stick but you can get away with doing the water method even though they're not water slide per se it does tell you to do that in the directions is use the water and readjust accordingly okay we'll work it out and then we're gonna move on okay uh, let's put the, the logo on we're gonna put the this is uh, this is pretty much the grand finale but we do still need to put the last thing of fins on there or uh, fin decals on there I do got the other set that came out pretty good so I got two sets out of three notice that's where the uh, rail guide is so I'm gonna turn it like this a little something something right that's a little too far so I'm thinking a little something like this it's gonna favor kind of like that side but this is how it's gonna sit because this is about where it's gonna go right we just have to make sure that the extension is going to be able to reach and that this one's going to be able to go up here but I think the longer one goes up here see that's going to be that's going to be too long so we have to kind of measure we definitely have to kind of just I've been, I've been uh, psyching myself up for this actually because this is probably not that complicated but I've been making it more complicated and of course I probably got this cut out all stupid but we're gonna try and make it work anyways so now that the longer one goes here and that the shorter one goes this way so I'm thinking I'm thinking Now what I'm going to do, start getting this wet. I already kind of pre-wiped it off, make sure there's no dust, all that. No dirt, no dust. Got this warm water with a little bit of dish soap in it, like we've been doing. I'm thinking that I'm going to put this one on first. Try not to stir up any dust in here. Try to keep it clean, but you know, cats. So. This might have to be done a few different times. This is probably less complicated than I'm making it to be. But I'm pretty sure that seems to go straight like that because if, if it's like that then it's crooked maybe it doesn't matter and it's a it's an optical illusion All right, let's get it peeled off get it dunked this right here is always something probably totally could just do this with a with my knife Probably a lot easier. Of course, you got to make sure these are clean, free of any dust or any little thin pieces of plastic. I'm sure, this is really exciting part right here. Okay. Got that kind of started. Let's see if I can get it up now. Let's see if I can get it out. If I can see it peeling from the backing now. Apparently, these are definitely not like water slide. And these backings will just kind of dissolve on you. One thing that I found is that if you do have to touch it with your fingers, try to keep your fingers a little damp and it won't stick so bad.
I'm probably doing a lot of things that drive some of you guys crazy that are probably a little more experienced and you're just watching this for SNGs. But okay, so then the next part, what I'm thinking, is the big one. Wipe it off, clean it off, blow it off, whatever we gotta do. Make sure my hands are somewhat clean. I just we'll see how this goes, because I know this is cut in a weird shape, plus, you know, I've got like a little bit of cut here that's not really completely smooth there. But we'll see how it lays down. Alright, we got that off the backing, I'm dipping it now. So far everything's going pretty smooth. Now we'll we'll see. We'll see. Let's see if this even matches at all. So you gotta get that lined up. So I can't let it stick too long. I've got to be kind of fast with this. See, that ain't going to work. That's lined up. So maybe I got to flip it this way. and I cut it I cut into the black when I was cutting it out of the decal sheet so it's gonna be a little bit thinner anyways so it's probably a bit of a like an optical illusion at this point but it's just getting this part lined up Try not to move it. And see, that's not gonna, that gap right there is not gonna completely match, anyways. But that's lined. That's, that's looking lined up, but it's not gonna completely match up, and the size is gonna be a little different because that was my mistake the way I cut it. Probably repeating myself <laughs> all right so with that done and not completely smoothed out let's get the last piece on there all right let's do this spill that dried up isn't quite matching right there. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah it is. Nope. Gotta flip it. Come on. As you can see the clear backing a little bit. Maybe that's just how it's supposed to go, or that's just how I cut it, or it's it's on here 15 ways of crooked. I'm trying to line it up, line these up. I'm looking at it and it's looking okay except for this. I'll try it this way one more time, see if that was messing with me. See, if I if I get that lined up like that, it's gonna it's going to be crooked that way, see? So, I think the way that it's going to lay is like this. And that's just going to be it. That's what we're going to get. I'd rather it have a weird looking gap right there than it be crooked. I'd rather it look straight here. 
now you start working it right we're satisfied I mean as good as it's going to get right and then we're going to start flattening it out see that, that cut right there is actually okay it's, it's actually laying down better than I thought it would because you know it just wasn't the the best I'm just going to smooth it every direction, right? Pretty much from the inside out. And I'm thinking, saying that's that clear is not overlapping with that clear, so that's good. If I can just kind of keep pushing and pulling a different direction just to make sure it's not wrinkled up anywhere, kinked up. Because this looks like it's kind of kinked up right here. So there we go. That laid it flat, I think. Definitely just got to make sure that it curves around the body tube. And then we'll get her dried off. And this is looking like an arrow rocket. And then we'll put the fins on. And then we'll figure out how we're going to attach the shock cord and I'll get to y'all in a minute about that. So take a clean fresh paper towel and just start working it, right? I mean I'm pretty sure it is laying down about as flat as it's going to get. There's nothing that's pushing against or working against. It's the most complex piece. And I probably made it more complex than it should have been. But I figured just the way I cut it would also help me with the alignment. And I, mean, I don't know. I've never built one before. And I've never seen one get built. So. as it lays down. Never used a peel and stick with the old water trick either, so so far it's been doing me really good. This is the way I will continue to do it for sure, unless I figure out something even better. Because it would not have looked this good back in the day for sure. Mm -mm. I think that's about that. Don't look crooked to me. Yeah, you can see some of the clear. The clear cut. It's kind of yuck, but... I figured it wasn't going to show that much anyway, so... I'll get this dried up and we'll get onto the fins. Wrap this up. This is what, what I got for you right here. That's how it pretty much came out. So got it all dried up and that's how it laid down. Voila. I don't know, is it a 10 being the worst or the best thing you've ever seen? This is just absolutely picture perfect, better than picture perfect. One being it should just go into the dumpster. What do you think? Uh, let's say for me, <laughs> personally, this would be about a seven for me. What do y'all think? Let me know. All right, let's get this finished, huh? Now, we'll go ahead and put on the last thing of fins, decals, right? I'm going to tell you that they have all gone on the same so far, so... To save some time on this video, that's why I'm going to show you one, because it applies for all of them. Just get it all nice and wet. Make sure that it's clean, you don't see any dirt, no dust, no bugs, cat hair, anything. 
kind of squeegee it off a little bit. Make sure that your hands are clean. And then we go ahead and peel them off the back. We'll start to apply. Get these peeled off. Now these fins are probably the more easier decals to put on of this kit. They're by they're mirrored um, symmetrical. I don't know if you'd call that bilaterally symmetrical, but you know it's, they're not a living thing. So, and you just kind of line them up with the fillets. Now remember the way I did this rocket. The f I did the fillets different than probably how it should have went, but did give it a kind of a smoother look except for some of the crevices and I had just been kind of lining it up with this edge here and making sure that it's not laying too far down but making sure that it's straight here and let's see if we were to rotate it see how that one looks that looks pretty similar so I think we're we're good on that one just make sure that it's going to lay flat on the bottom all right that way it's not curving around on the fillet it's kind of sitting on top of this edge here on the on that fillet there i guess mine is custom let's just say that it's custom look at there got a little dirt under there now Let's just say that adds character. I could lift it up, get that out of there, but you know what? I'm gonna leave it there because it wanted to be there so bad that we're just gonna let it there and be there forever. <laughs> you wanna be there? Okay, well you can be there, all right. <laughs> I'm just squeezing it out. Squeeze. So there's a bubble there. Now, where's this bubble wanna go? Does it wanna go this way? Wanna go that way? There it is, right there. Kind of just maybe go something like that. Pushing out all the air, water. Shouldn't really be too much air in there. There's one here. Let's see if maybe I can. So I haven't attempted to dry it off yet. I'm just still squeezing, squeezing pretty firm. I mean not total he-man 100 pounds force but you know it's definitely not sliding now it's 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 pretty stuck I don't know if I was to try to lift it I don't know if it would lift up the paint or not but I don't want to find out so we're committed now this is what it's going to be pretty much now I take the old paper towel start drying it And I'm going to take a look in the shine to see if I see any bubbles or bumps. Yeah, there's a little bump there, and of course there's that, but that's not really showing up in the light there, the reflection. And of course I got a little water still on my thumb there. I don't really see any bubbles on the root edge there. down with it like this just kind of scoop around the fillet and kind of go up towards the edge there and then probably pull towards this edge push pull push pull this is what I've done for literally every single one of them I'm not seeing any bubbles in the reflection. The shine, I don't know if you guys can see that on camera there. So yeah, that shine right there, that's what I'm talking about. See, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, I think that's, I think that's a decal right there. Now if we go and look at the other ones, it's pretty similar how I did, how I did them. Whether it's supposed to lay like that or not, Everywhere. 
make sure it's dry when I'm done. All right, let's do the last one. Huh? Right, here we go. Dipping it in the water. Now, mind you, this water has been cooled down. It's literally the same water from earlier, from doing the uh, logo. So it might not have to be completely warm. All right, so I'm going to push it this way a little bit. Kind of. That's awesome. It could just slide like that to where you want it. And that's about it. The wetter you got it, the better, usually. And I'm not really pushing too firm right here. I'm just kind of working it, working it, and then I will get firmer. Just making sure that it's laying down flat and it's not kinked up somewhere that I'm not seeing. It looks like it's straight this way, so it looks like it's straight along the root edge. It's lined up with this edge here. It's not quite as thick as this one, but... That's fine. Plus they're not cut down to the absolute micron of precision. But not bad for me. And my little ruler technique, I guess. Alright, so now now we start to dry it. And it's laying down, I think, pretty darn decent, so let's see what we can get here. I'm not seeing any bubbles. This laid down, I think, better than the other one. I'm still kind of just, now I'm kind of doing it firm, squeegeeing out the water. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm not seeing anything odd. I think this laid down pretty good. Definitely so far in this decal stuff on a high note. I thinks. I thinks. Yep, just some water. Literally a drop, maybe two. Good old blue Dawn dish soap. Sure doesn't have to be brand specific, but that's what I'm using. Any kind of dish soap, or maybe there's other kind of soaps that might work better. It's kind of laying on the root edge a little bit compared to the other ones. So maybe, maybe this would be the special one. How about that? How about that? But that's it. Get this wiped off some of the water. I don't think really any water got down in here to the tube. That shouldn't hurt anything. But this is a finished rocket. And one day when I'm cool and grown up and big and bad I might actually go fly it yeah you know I'm gonna fly it or do you we don't know yet but I'm I'm gonna fly it <laughs> all right let's get the shot cord attached and that's a wrap two one what if I told you that it's actually been a while since I made this and uh we've already launched it and got it back. We've got it back. We successfully launched the Arrow. And it was a good day. At the Florida Space Modeling Association. I will be doing a video on that. Shortly in the near future. But I never showed you how to do the attachment of the shot cord. I had to do it real quick. Because it was launch time. And I was like, well, I want to launch this, so I didn't film it, but I'm still going to show you how, to, how I did it. I went ahead and sanded this with 3000 grit, okay, wet sanded it and made it ultra mega smooth. Now, I was a little bit concerned, but not really, because I kind of knew how it was going to go, but I wasn't sure until actually I got out there and like the humidity and the weather. Now, this slides in and out. But, you know, it's not uh, 
it's not crazy um, smooth and too loose, but it does have a firmness to it. Like a, it's not. I can't. I can't hold it upside down. I ain't gonna fall out. So that's good. Okay. So sometimes when I am pulling it out, or you go to put it back in, it kind of snag, snag, snag. That's because it's going in at an angle. But another thing that I did instead of I was I was thinking about using shear pins or screws for the nose cone, but I did not. And I'll show you what I did. I put foam tape right here. Three pieces. And I am pretty sure that was 16th by, I think, half an inch? I'll have to double check for you. But this right here keeps it nice and firm. I'll put a link for that down below. Yeah, launching on that bad boy right there. 29 millimeter. Rock simmed out to about a little over 1,400 feet. And this is half inch by 1 16th, I just checked. Interesting stuff. Just literally sticks on there. So, the shot cord. What did I do? How did I get it back? Well, let's pull it on out of there. What did I do for my setup? Okay. There's nothing special going on down there besides it's attached to the baffle. Okay, I used a swivel. I didn't use. I used the old swivel method, and this one worked just fine. Um, I put tape. I'll show you why. If I can get it undone. Well, I'll show you what kind of swivel it is. All right. And I didn't put any glue here on that. So. But I did put some tape here so maybe it wouldn't come undone on me. That seemed to work. Um, so, literally about, I don't know, probably a little over a foot and a half down the shot cord, I put what's called a dropper loop in the shot cord itself. Okay? And then I just attach the swivel to that. And of course, this just that knot that I like to use is the uh, the loop knot. Fishing and rockets go hand in hand. Fishing swivels and fishing knots. I'm going to show you how to do this knot. So then I had to decide what kind of swivel to use, right? So here's three different kinds. You got your Snap swivels, safety swivels. Usually on the low power, these are the weakest, but these are what usually work just fine for low power. This one's the one I actually went with. Okay? I believe these are called safety swivels. Now, notice it has these tabs right here. And these tabs make it a lot stronger. But with these tabs also come snags so that's why I put masking tape around them to prevent snags and you probably wouldn't want to get snagged in fishing either so weaker but snagless possibility of snags but stronger and then you also have these type here probably less chance of getting snagged with one of these than one of these. Now, this would probably be a little bit weaker though. Maybe. But I know that these are primarily used salt water. So if you're going big game fishing, these type are usually used. These right here usually use like fresh water. So, but yeah, that's what I literally did is just put some masking tape around it to make it a little more snagless. Now, of course, thought about the quick link quick link would fit in there just fine this is a home depot special all right 1 8 480 would have been just fine but I would have had to rig it up a slightly different way so what we need to do is figure out 
how to do a dropper loop. Now here's some 400 pound Kevlar. Here's your tag end. That's going to your nose cone or your payload, however you're going to do it. Of course, this end's going towards the rocket. So before you tie it on to the nose cone, what you're going to do is make you a loop. And I'll, and I'll have an image on screen to help with this. I'm just going to make you a good old loop, right? And you're going to do this about four or five times, maybe even six. How many was that? Were you counting? I wasn't counting. One, two, three, four, I think. <laughs> so, then what you do, you find you a spot like right here in the middle, okay? And you take this end, and you're going to bring that up through. Right, we're splitting it open. And you bring that up through. Boom. Now, we're going to kind of cinch it down. We're going to pull this way and pull this way. This isn't going to be a very big one, but sometimes you don't need them that big. It just depends. You're just going to work it till you need where it needs to be. And then we just, once we kind of get that loop to have the size that we want, then we cinch it down. Okay? Now, these are usually used to put like your hooks, like you're going to make a chicken rig or whatever in fishing, and, or maybe put a weight there. But, you know, we're going to use them for snap swivels. And you can hook it on there. That's literally what I did. And that's the same knot that I put to the motor mount. The loop knot. But this is a dropper loop. Okay? And, of course, this, this is elastic. But this is, this is Kevlar just for demonstration. And that's what we did. And this rocket is finished. And, like I said, I already flew it. It flew great on an F-42AT. And we have ourselves an arrow, and it's already been flown successfully. So with that, that's the conclusion with the paint and finish video. This rocket is now done. And... I want to thank everybody for watching and sticking through it because I know that my videos are incredibly long, but I hope that they're informative. And you've already clicked off by now, but if you haven't, well, goodbye. Sign on. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Auf Wiedersehen. We'll see you next time.